Proferritin that tells your body, we don't have enough red blood cells, let's make some more. So your kidney does a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Now, everything has a kidney, uh, or all multicellular organisms have to deal with waste removal. So this isn't my movie, I haven't created this, but what you're looking at is the development of a kidney in a mouse. The scientists did some really cool optical imaging to create some 3D reconstruction. And so what you're looking at is I told you that there's a bunch of tubes. That's what your kidney's made of, all these tubes. And this is what you're seeing is the tubes. So just observe what's going over, what's happening over time with the tubes that are being created. How many are being created? What's the size of the organ look like? So this is pretty cool. And this is exactly how our kidneys form as well. So we can study animals like mice and rats and learn a lot about how our kidneys form. So can someone tell me like, wh what did you see there? What did you observe from the beginning to the end? And the, the structure itself got bigger. That's what the kids are saying. Yep. Oh, they're all connected. They're all connected. Absolutely. Very good. And then they're branching more and more. Absolutely. That's a really important point. So now this isn't all of the cells in the kidney. These are just some of the tube cells. There's, the whole thing's filled in with lots and lots of other cells that do lots and lots of other functions. But you're absolutely correct. You get a lot more branching. So you create all those uh, tubes, you get bigger, so it can handle everything that the kidney needs to handle. So another important little, little factoid, uh, about 25% of your cardiac output, so that's 25% of the blood in your body, is in your kidneys right now. So there's a ton of blood, which is why they're red. It's part of why they're red, because there's just so much blood, because it has to filter everything that you, all of your cells, uh, produce all that waste goes into your blood and then it gets filtered by the kidney So you're absolutely right with your observations excellent good job Now I study other animals because I'm interested in Learning how our kidneys work by studying other animals and I'm also interested in the diversity of kidneys so Every animal has a kidney so all vertebrates so things with a backbone so dogs cats reptiles, birds, um, anything you think of. Uh, even simple animals like worms. They don't have kidneys like ours, but they still have tubes to remove waste. And they're kind of like really simple rudimentary kidneys. So what you're looking at in that really gross picture, that's a set of kidneys from about a six foot long alligator that I got from Louisiana. So I study reptile kidneys, so alligators, and this is a turtle kidney. It always reminds me of a McRib sandwich for some reason. So that is actually a snapping turtle. So that's from a snapping turtle. Uh, and then these are some other turtle kidneys. And these are from box turtles. And you can see none of them look the same. So our mammalian kidneys, so a dog kidney, a human kidney, a mouse kidney, all kind of looks the same. But a kidney uh, in reptiles are all very, very different. And I'm kind of interested in why they're different. Why do they look different? And another thing, cool thing you can do, you can look inside these kidneys. And that's what these pictures are. If you were to take those kidneys and slice them up and make really, really, <clears throat> excuse me, thin slices, and then you stain them so you can see color, this is what the tissue looks like. This is called histology. And so you can see that you can see the tubes, in fact, especially in that bottom one. So you can kind of make out some of the tube structures, right? And these little dark circles here, this is where that filtration process for the tube starts. And that's what we're going to practice with our demonstration today. They're called glomeruli, or glomerulus. That's where the blood enters and then blood leaves, but all the bad stuff in the blood goes into the glomerulus and down that tube and gets processed to make urine and, and, and other things. And so these, this is actually tissue sections from an alligator. I also use zebrafish. So fish have kidneys. They don't look like our kidneys, but they have 
lots and lots of tubes. They're structured the same way, so they have a glomerulus, and they have different parts of their tube just like us, so I can study zebrafish and learn a lot about our kidney tube. And so I study uh, embryonic zebrafish, which is this, this guy here. This is what a zebrafish embryo looks like at two days. These are its eyes, the developing eyes, right here. And the beginning of the kidney is kind of like right here. And then there's two tubes that go down the, the tail in fish. And this is like, zebrafish is something you see at the pet store. You go to the pet store, they've got zebrafish. They call them Danio. And this is uh, trout, bass, any type of fish you've ever seen. They all have the same kind of kidney. Okay. So, uh, Ms. Holder, I'll leave it up to you how you want to have the group start to work on the demonstration. So I'd like us to do is do a very simple demonstration of, of how the kidney does its filtration process. And then demonstration of what the filtration process kind of normally happens in our kidneys. But also we're going to create a diseased kidney. And what happens with a diseased kidney? And so maybe someone has, knows someone who has nephropathy or some other disease in the kidney. It happens a lot with people who have heart disease. They also a lot of times have kidney disease. Um, it's something that doctors always worry about. If you go to the hospital for any reason, they're always want to make sure your kidneys are working normally. Uh, just they're a really important organ. So what we need today is, is some water. Uh, some, we've got some clear plastic cups. We've got some coffee filters and some beads, I think. It's food coloring. About how much water do they need? Um, I don't know about, I don't know what you have to measure, but it's about four. About half a cup? About two cups. Yeah, about a full cup's worth is probably. Okay. Go ahead and go to the sink and get you some water. So go ahead and put a, a drop or two of, of food coloring in, in your cup of water. Okay. Food coloring. All right, so while we're getting everything together, students, why don't you grab uh, two coffee filters. One of them is going to be your, your healthy kidney. And the second coffee filter is going to be your diseased kidney. So with your diseased kidney, kind of fold your coffee filter in half like this. If you've got scissors or you can tear it if you want, make a couple of small, a handful of slits at the, at the fold of your coffee filter. That's your disease. All right, so our, our dyed water is going to represent our blood, and that dye is going to represent all the different things that are in your blood, like proteins, uh, sugars, amino acids, things like that. Your coffee filter is that thing called the glomerulus that I talked about. That's, that's where the filtration process starts. So take some beads and put them in, in your good coffee filter, the one you didn't cut, just a couple, two or three, okay? And take that coffee filter and you want to hold it over one of your empty cups with your beads in it. And you're going to have to hold on to your coffee because I want your coffee filter. Because then I want you to pour some of that dyed water through your coffee filter. Let's see what happens. Try not to make it too big, big of a mess like I am. Do that, you can do the same thing but with the coffee filter that you cut. Looks like for some the beads fell through and for some the beads did not. Mine is in between. I got a kidney stone. <laughs> so what happens a lot with kidney disease is your filter doesn't work normally. So your cells and proteins, really big things that normally don't go into your kidney, end up getting into your urine. And that's not a good thing. Uh, and that's why doctors will test your urine for cells, for protein. Uh, is this, what, this is exactly what happens. The holes uh, open up in your filtration for your kidneys. And that's the big hallmark of kidney disease. 
And so this is just kind of a simple way that normally all that stuff is supposed to get trapped by your kidney, which is the coffee filter. And it goes back into your bloodstream where it's supposed to stay. And then you've got holes in your kidney, essentially. Those proteins and cells are going to get through. And they're going to end up in your urine where they're not supposed to. And that means your body is not doing what it's supposed to do anymore. It's not keeping that stuff like it's supposed to. 